Okay. Uh, sorry, no Q&A this week. I'm not going to have time for it, unfortunately. Uh, we are now one week removed from Slammiversary, and the big news coming out of that pay-per-view was the Samoa Joe heel turn. Now, if you'll recall, I said that they were going to need a damn good explanation for that to make sense. And what they came up with was, as Kevin Nash put it, the main event mafia couldn't beat Samoa Joe, so they had to buy him instead. Uh, Joe was annihilating them every week. They couldn't stop him for the life of them, so they took Jenna Maraska's millions of dollars, I thought she only had one million dollars, but whatever, uh, to buy Joe off. Uh, Joe's quote-unquote mystery advisor told him to take the deal, and these last few weeks of Joe pretty much mauling Nash, Steiner, and Booker T was the Mafia guys allowing Joe to beat the piss out of them, basically taking a bullet to sell the illusion. And this probably isn't the best explanation they could have come up with, but it wasn't the worst either. I was expecting much worse out of this, frankly. Um, remember, remember when WCW did the Goldberg heel turn during the New Blood storyline? It didn't work at all, and then they later admitted that they didn't really have a logical reason to do it, they just did it because they thought it would be shocking? Or how about when Steve Austin turned heel at WrestleMania, and then the next night on Raw, he came out and just said, I don't owe anyone an explanation. Which in smart mark terms translates to, the writers haven't thought of an explanation yet. Uh, this Joe heel turn was executed with a little more thought and planning, it looks like. Um, they managed to uh, cover most of their bases pretty well, as far as explaining the things that just were not adding up. Um, I'm actually willing to buy into most of this. The only part I'm not really sold on is the buying Joe off thing. And I think it really comes down to this. If a group of guys beat you half to death, broke your arm in three places or whatever it was, and then a few months later you came back as an engine of destruction looking for payback, beating the living hell out of all these five guys week after week after week, and then one of them came up to you and said, hey, if you come over to our side and throw in with us, we'll give you X million dollars. You know, would that be enough to sway your loyalty? Would that be enough for you to want the money rather than be the world heavyweight champion? I don't know. Uh, the writers think the answer is yes in Samoa Joe's case, but I'm on the fence with that. Now, obviously, there was going to be a lot of incredulity here, and I think what helped this angle a lot was that they had AJ kind of be the voice of that incredulity that the fans had to be feeling. I mean, basically saying, really, Joe? You sold us all out for money? For money? And this was basically the TNA writers saying that they acknowledge that they've created a situation that wasn't 100% believable, but the fact that they have other characters pointing out how unbelievable it is makes it easier to get away with. I mean, if the fans don't buy it, they can just point to AJ and say, hey, look, AJ thinks it's bullshit, too. So, uh, the Joe heel turn worked better than I expected it to. I think this was a heel turn that needed to happen for a number of reasons, because... You know, as, as the TNA writers have kind of dropped the ball on Samoa Joe's character, and this is going back a ways, like even before his world title reign, as they dropped the ball with his character, he started losing fan support as a babyface. He was still over, but if you look at his face pops from 09 and his face pops in 05, 06, there's no comparison. I mean, they were having a really hard time getting fans behind Joe as a babyface again. And I think it'll be a lot easier for them to get the fans behind him as a heel. I mean, Joe got a bigger reaction on this show than he has in a while. And Joe has always been much better as a heel, in my opinion. I mean, that's where his real charisma comes out. So, I like the end result. I'm not totally in love with how they got there, but I'm willing to accept it. Uh, the explanation they gave wasn't perfect, but I think it was good enough. Now, the problem is that now it looks like we're back to where we started with the Main Event Mafia burying everybody. But the silver lining is that now at least there are a couple of young guys in that group as well who may benefit from being there, and that's better than what we had before. Um, also, I thought the, the last segment of the show was terrific. Sting getting kicked out of the Mafia was another thing that really needed to happen, and it was a long time coming. Hopefully now Sting will realize that he made a big, huge freaking mistake, step off his soapbox, and stop spewing his holier-than-thou BS, or at least directed at people who actually deserve it. And personally, man, I, I, I still think Sting's character right now is the biggest hypocrite on Earth. But this might do something to change that, which is definitely a good thing. Um, another good thing, we saw the first hype video for Sarah Stock. She debuts in three weeks, thank God. Plus, according to the spoilers, she wrestled Melissa at the TV tapings. And one of my subscribers made a very good point about this. This was, this was most likely a dark match, but there's two very important things to keep in mind here. Number one... Sarah Stock won the match, but Melissa attacked her and laid her out afterwards. 
which there's really no point in doing in a dark match if and it's very very suspicious if we're talking about a character that's never seen on TV unless she's under a burqa playing someone else number two they gave Melissa a new name I'm not gonna say what it is because it's kinda stupid but if they gave her a new name that could mean that they want her to have a name they can license since TNA likes to own their their characters names put those two things together and this could very well mean that they have plans to use Melissa on TV in the near future and I don't think it's a coincidence that this is happening just a few weeks after Melissa had that dark match with Awesome Kong that reportedly blew the roof off the Impact Zone. I think that match probably opened a lot of people's eyes backstage. And if Sarah Stock and Melissa have a feud on TV, man, it's going to produce some fantastic matches. Also good is they're starting off the Victory Road hype the right way. They already have a couple matches announced after just one show. Unfortunately, I'm really nervous about some of these matches. I don't see any reason on earth to do AJ Styles versus Kevin Nash. It's really questionable whether AJ will be able to carry Nash to a good match for one thing. And if if Nash actually goes over, it'll be the worst thing TNA could possibly do. I mean, it would make AJ look like shit, and Nash as the Legends Champion would just turn that belt back into the joke it was when Booker T had it. I mean, instead of AJ versus Nash, why not do AJ versus Matt Morgan, since Morgan's in the main event mafia now? At least that way, if the heel wins, you're putting the belt on a young guy who will actually get something out of it. Uh, concurrently, Booker T and Scott Steiner versus Beer Money is the same deal. I think TNA has really elevated Beer Money over the last year, and with the 3D feud especially. They've done a great job with that. But if they lose their titles to two over-the-hill veterans who do not deliver in the ring and have become complete and utter parodies of themselves in recent times, then you might as well just take your tag team titles and flush them down the crapper. Uh, and also, you have announced that at Victory Road, you're going to have Charmel versus Jenna Maraska. TNA, no one wants to see that. No one. If you absolutely have to do this, then for God's sake, do it on impact. This thing is not going to sell pay-per-views. If anything, it's going to encourage your fans to not order Victory Road. It's a complete joke. It's garbage. It's trash. And I have no idea what you're thinking. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But if you want to hear more of my thoughts on Jenna Maraska versus Charmel, I'm on Twitter now. Put my initial thoughts up on my page there. Or you can wait for the month in review knocked out column for this month, which will be posted on TNAWrestlingNews.com after Victory Road, where I will explain my thoughts on this in depth. But on quite a tirade. There's one more thing I want to mention before I wrap things up here. On this show, you had Taylor Wilde and Daphne compete in an unhyped two and a half minute match of 10,000 thumbtacks. TNA, why do you do this? You couldn't keep these women off the show for one week to sell the Monsters Ball? Taylor had to be carried out of the arena at the pay-per-view. Daphne got slammed on thumbtacks, and now it's like all that punishment meant nothing. And if Daphne is healthy enough to compete in a 10,000 thumbtacks match after her thumbtack bump is slammiversary, you know what that tells your audience? That tells them that thumbtack bu thumb bumps really aren't that bad because people can recover from them just like that. So now you've completely no-sold the monster's ball and killed the devastation of the thumbtack bump. Very good, TNA writers. Nice job. And I give huge respect to Daphne for going through with all that. Two thumbtack bumps in two days, that's brutal. If she doesn't get a huge push after sacrificing her body like that, then there's something seriously wrong with this company. But her and Taylor never should have been put in this position. This whole thing was an exercise in counterproductive stupidity. And I, now I really, really hope this is, that this feud is over. Taylor and Daphne have had, I, I, I think, five matches over the last two months. Uh, a Monsters Ball, a regular match, a tag team match, another Monsters Ball, and now a 10,000 thumbtacks match. Taylor has gone over four out of those five times. So Daphne's been buried. There's no more gas in this feud. It is time to do something else with these women. Off the top of my head, um, how about a three-way feud? Taylor Wilde versus Sarah Stock versus Melissa. Just a suggestion. <laughs>